Hello, everybody, and welcome back. So um, I'm sure you guys uh, can tell that these are tape delayed, or I record them at one day and then I push them out on another day, but it is pouring out right now. Uh, so hopefully when you're watching this, it is nice and sunny out, but just know that when I'm making this, it is raining cats and dogs. In fact, there goes a golden retriever and a Siamese cat. Go figure, right? So uh, the whole point of today's lesson, let's get to that. The whole point of today's lesson is to look at energy loss and what would happen, uh, oh, excuse me, where does that energy go and what is it stored as or what is it used up as? Uh, can we do anything with it? Meaning can we solve for anything? Um, and just kind of to take our traditional equation of, right, energy initial equals energy final, which goes into PE plus KE equals PE plus KE. We are going to expand upon this, uh, this whole equation right here. I'm just gonna move you guys so you can actually see. We're gonna expand upon this whole equation right here. So without further ado, let's jump right in and get started. So what we've learned about thus far is that all of the energy before has to equal all of the energy after. And we've talked about potential energy, We've talked about kinetic energy. There's elastic potential, there's chemical energy. So there's all those different types. So we've really just concentrated on gravitational potential and kinetic. And those are the two we stuck with. And we've always said that, you know, if you have a building that when the ball is up there, it's 100% potential and 0% kinetic and then as the ball falls it eventually hits the ground and then turns into 100 percent kinetic and zero percent potential and somewhere along the middle there it's like a 50 50 type thing so we've always said that it is a 100 percent transfer well guys i'm here to tell you today it is not there is not a 100 percent transfer and i apologize that um but uh that's what we're going to be learning about today. So we need to do a little work. And I think, um, believe it or not, I made this video once already. I went to download it and it was lost. Never downloaded. So this is actually the second time I'm making the video. So I'm hoping that I will improve upon my mistakes from the first video and make this one seamless. Okay, the best one it could be. Mind you, there still will be mistakes, but uh, well, let's hope for the best. So. I think what I want to do is I want to take you through an equation and then we're going to jump into a, an example. So let's take a look at this. Let's break this down. MGH plus one half MB squared equals MGH plus one half MB squared. And it's weird. It's like a blanket, right? It's like the lights going in and out. Let me turn off the lights to see if that changes anything. I think your old teacher found a way to actually make it worse by turning out the lights. So let's take a look at this. Uh, let's take a look at an example too while we're going through this. Um, eh, you know, what? I'm just gonna tell you. Today we're gonna learn about that this side will not equal this side. There's gonna need to be something else, and there's gonna actually have to be this loss. I'm gonna write it in blue here. There's gonna need to be this new thing called energy loss okay and that energy loss will actually be able to be broken down okay think about this when you coast down a hill in a car the car will eventually slow down and, and it's slowing because of the friction between the tires and the road and think about a force of friction right friction if the car is moving down a hill and that tire is moving down, friction, force of friction, is opposing the motion. Okay, it's opposing gravity, pulling this thing down, down the hill. It's doing work, right? The friction is doing work to slow the ball down. Well, that's exactly what we're looking at here. And in order for it to do work, it needs to have some type of energy. All right? 
So loss is actually energy loss. Okay, it's the energy loss. And in this case, our energy loss will be equal to work done. Okay, I promise you'll see how this all makes sense in just a second. Now you know that work is equal to force times displacement, right? Uh, right there, work, work equal to force times displacement. All right. What type of force did we say with regard to that ball rolling down the hill? Do you remember? Was it normal force? Was it force of gravity? Was it force of pull, force of tension, or was it force of friction? F of F times Z. Notice we just replaced the Fs, right? Do you guys remember from your equations list what force of friction equals? Force of friction equals mu Fn. And we still need that displacement there. You see how we're taking this and breaking this down step by step by step. All right, I want you to think back. Here's a table with a book on it. And we said that book was being pushed down by the force of gravity. And we said there's some other force that's pushing that book up, right? I'm sitting in a stool right now. There's some force pushing me up because gravity is pushing me down. And, we're, and we said whenever you're in contact with a surface, there's a force that always acts perpendicular to that surface. And we said that's the normal force. So in this case, F of N equals F of G. And we're going to make that assumption. And we know F of G is really equal to mass times gravity or MG. And if F of N equals F of G and F of G equals MG, then F of N has to equal MG. So let's replace that. Loss equals mu MGD. And this right here is going to be something that we could plug in right there. So let me get this equation written for you in its entirety. And then I'm going to have you square it off because that is a, this is going to be a very important equation. So after going through all of that, we finally end up with MGH plus one half MV squared equals MGH plus one half MV squared plus mu MGD. And this right here is a very important equation and it builds upon the, equa the equation that we learned about last time. So, is there something else you guys notice about this equation? Something else that we can do? See anything that's common? You're right, there's an M. You can, I, wouldn't, I, I don't know if I'd recommend it because I would just solve as is, but if you wanna be all fancy schmancy, you can cross out the M as long as you cross out the M in each one, okay? You have to be very careful about that because especially over here, sometimes the M might be disguised in maybe the normal force or the force of friction. And if it is, you can't cross the M's out. You can only cross the M out when you cross it out in every single one, very important. That's why I usually, as a rule of thumb, keep it in everything, but hey, I give you guys the option. So this is very important. This is a very um, difficult topic to try and figure out, but I think you guys can handle it. And I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump into a sample problem, okay? So pause this, copy it down, make sure you get all this, because we're gonna jump into that problem right now. I'm gonna leave this equation up here because I'm going to do my drawing up top. I'm just going to kind of cross out, uncross these M's, get rid of all this, write my M's back in there. And let's get this problem going. So we have a roller coaster and the roller coaster hill kind of looks like this. Here's the roller coaster when it's at part A, and here's the roller coaster when it's at part B. The roller coaster's mass 
is 450 kilograms. Okay. Uh, it starts at point A at rest. Then it starts rolling down the track and reaches a speed of 25 meters per second at the bottom at point B. I want to know what is the energy loss and what is the mu or the coefficient of friction. All right. There's also something else we need to know that the roller coaster starts a height of 47 meters at the very top. All right. Let's plug in this stuff and see what we know. Does it have height to begin with at point A? Yes, it does, 47. Um, so we're going to do, I'm not going to cross out the M's because I, I want you guys to see everything all the way through. 450 times 9.8 times 47 plus. Is it rolling or standing still at the very top? It's stationary, very good. So that means this whole term drops out equals does it have any height at the bottom no nope, because it's at the bottom so this drops out plus one half the mass 450 times the velocity 25 squared plus i'm going to take this all the way back and just write loss because i'm going to break this down into two steps to begin with now remember, when we first started this equation, we wrote loss there because we said, at its simplest form, we are losing some type of energy. All right? Let's go through and do this. 450 times 9.8 times 47. You get a staggering 207,270. Let's multiply this out. You get 140,625 plus the loss. Remember, we are looking for a loss. We want to find out what the loss of energy is. How do we do this? Very good. We just subtract over. And we find out that the loss of energy is equal to... 666,645 joules, all right? So think about that just for one second, guys. You started with all this energy up the top. And we said, we used to say a couple lessons ago, a couple practice problems ago, we used to say in a perfect world, all this energy at the top changed into all this energy at the bottom, okay? Remember I told you it was raining out? It is thundering and lightning out like you wouldn't believe. So, well, I mean, you wouldn't believe it because you guys are over in Putnam right now, but regardless, it's still thunder and lightning out. But hopefully when you're watching this, it's sunny out. Ah, anyway, all right, let's keep going. We have all this energy at the top. In a perfect world, it would transfer to all the energy at the bottom, but it doesn't. We have friction. We have sound. We have noise. We have heat, okay? We have the rubbing between the tires and the, and the road or the wheels and the track. So there is some energy that's dissipated to other areas. We just found that energy. It was loss, right? I know energy is not really loss, right? Conver um, uh, conservation of energy says energy is neither created nor destroyed, only transfer transformed from state to state or form to form. But it was loss, right? It, this is the energy maybe that went into friction, that slowed the cart down. This was the energy that maybe went into the sound or the buildup of heat. FYI, for our purposes, it's always going to be friction. So I guess we could just say that this is the energy that went into friction, the force of friction slowing this car down. Okay. Now, in order to slow a car down, what needs to be done to it? Like if you got a car rolling towards you, you got to push on it, right? What are you doing to that car? You're applying a force, but you're doing work on the car to slow it down. Work. This right here was work done by that energy. Okay, very important. So important that I'm going to kind of erase all this. And I'm going to tell you, whoopsies. I'm going to tell you right here that this right here was the work 
done by force of friction to slow the coaster down. Okay, that was the work done by the force of friction to slow the roller coaster down. All right, we just found our first answer. What was the work lost? Check. 66,645 joules. Now we want to find the mu. If you remember back from our original equation, we did all this potential energy plus kinetic energy equals potential energy plus kinetic energy plus a loss. And we said that loss was really work. And we said the work can be broken down into F times D. And then we said, well, the force is really the force of friction times displacement. And then we said, well, force of friction is really mu Fn times displacement. And then we said Fn can be broken down to M times G. Guess what? This all equals loss. So loss is really equal to mu M G D. Guess what, guys? We can just plug it in. 66,645 equals mu. That's what we're looking for. M is 450. G is 9.8. And what's this distance? Is it the 47? No, that's the height. In fact, your old teacher, he didn't give you the distance because he wanted to wait till this point to kind of explain to you. The distance is actually this right here, the actual track that was covered. And let's say that was 80 meters. Okay, it's not the height, it's what was actually covered. So let's do this math out now. We have, try and get this mark open. 66,645 equals mu times, let's multiply 450 times 9.8 times 80. 3, 5, 2, 8, 0, 0, 0. Pick up, sorry. How do we solve for mu? We divide. Remember way back when we learned about mu, mu is unitless and it is also less than one. And if we did this right, we should find that our mu is less than one. And in fact, 0.19 is less than one. How do you like that? We learned something new and we solved and we proved it. Not so bad, right guys? Not so bad. Let's do one more example and then we will call this video done. Here we looked at something starting at the top and then coasting down. Let's look at now something that starts at the bottom and coasts its way up to the top. So let's say we have a hill. And here, at the very bottom of the hill, a motorcycle is traveling and he reaches a top speed of 96 meters per second at the bottom of a hill. Now he coasts up this hill to a height of 178 meters. Notice he went up a height, not a distance, but a height of 178 meters to point B. Hopefully you guys can kind of see that, make it out a little bit, to point B. Um, the mass of the motorcycle is 250 kilograms. And he traveled a distance, that's this right here, of 350 meters. Notice the difference between height and distance covered. Height and distance. Okay? H and D, two different parts of the equation. I want to know what's the mu between the bike tires and the road. All right, you guys know what to do. Let's take out our handy dandy equation. PE plus KE equals PE plus KE plus loss. 
MGH plus one half MV squared equals MGH plus one half MV squared plus. We know the loss is really the work, and we know work is really F times D. We know, oh boy, I need to break this down even further, don't I? We know that this is really the force of friction times displacement, which is really mu Fn times D. Now, we want to find the mu. So technically, we have the mu, but we don't have the Fn. We have to remember that fact that Fn, we're going to make the assumption that that equals M, uh, excuse me, Fg, which is really equal to Mg. So mu m times g times d. And now we can write out our final equation. And plug in everything that we need. Okay, so I'm going to move this up to the top. That way we got plenty of room to uh, solve for all this. MGH plus one half MV squared equals MGH plus one half MV squared plus mu MGD. All right. I think this marker is almost about out of Let's see if I can get another one out here. This one works. So let's begin to plug this stuff in. Again, guys, you can cross out the mass if you want. I'm not going to just because I'm going to leave it in there and show you the complete problem, but you can if you want. So 250 times 9.8 times a height. The height is this way, not the distance covered. It's the height. 170. Ooh, your old teacher almost made a mistake. You guys should have been yelling at the screen. No, 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 don't do that. What are you doing? I'm down here, I should be at point A, right? He has no height. So that's zero plus one half. Hopefully you caught that, all right? If you didn't, take a look right here, right? He's on the ground. The height is zero, which means this whole term is zero. But he is traveling one half M and the V squared 96 squared equals. Now he has some height, 250 times 9.8 times 178 plus he coasts up to a stop which means he has no velocity so that's zero plus mu which is what we're looking for m is 250 g is 9.8 and then the distance covered is this what he covered and that is 350. multiply everything out so uh, 96 squared times 250 times 0.5 comes out to 1152000. Hopefully you guys are making these calculations along with me. Okay. I want to make sure you guys are doing this. Equals, let's multiply this out. 250 times 9.8 times 178. That gives us 436100. Zero, zero plus mu, zero drops out, times, let's multiply these things together, 250 times uh, 9.8 times 350, we get 857, 500. What's the next step? It's like a blink, do you see it guys on the computer? Uh, must be the camera focusing in and out. What's next here? Good, we need to subtract this over, minus, Four three six one zero zero. Doing this, we find that we get seven one five nine zero zero. That equals mu times eight five seven five zero zero. What do we do next? We will divide. Very good. 8575008575500 and mu should be less than 1 and in fact guys we see that we get a mu of 0.83 so
So hopefully you see now that energy, we don't live in a perfect world, so all the energy at the top isn't equal to all the energy at the bottom or all the energy at the bottom isn't equal to all the energy at the top. So I hope this has helped you guys. I hope you have, um, you can understand and learn that we do have some energy loss and where that energy goes into the force of friction and how that energy uh, is then transferred into work and how we can solve for um, maybe the, the mu. Uh, we could solve for how far it's traveled. That would be another example. Um, so all of this good stuff. If you had to solve for the D, I would give you guys a mu. So. But uh, hopefully you understood this. And if uh, you have any questions, please email me. Watch this video a couple times. Um, but I will be giving you guys some practice problems in a, a little bit. And um, yeah, this is probably our last official notes video. So it has been a pleasure. I know I've been a little bit long-winded, but I appreciate you guys hanging with me. Um, it has been a pleasure to, uh, to teach you this. So have a great day, everybody, and be on the lookout for those energy loss problems. All right, take care, everybody. Bye-bye.